Hello and welcome to Code Slicing. In this episode of this series on custom modifiers, we're going to be looking at a situation that might lead you to use a view modifier implementation. Now you still don't have to, and I'm not even sure myself whether this is the right road to go, but it, but it is an example of why you might want to even think about it when you don't have to. Okay, uh, we'll present both sides of the story in, in this one. You can come to your own conclusions, but I think you'll see that it's not as cut and dry as you might think. Uh, so if you missed part one, where we just looked at using an extension to do a view modifier, then, um, you know, that might be something you want to go and check out before this one, but you don't have to, obviously, um, you know, you do you uh, and, uh, and I'll do me and we'll do this. Right, so what we're looking at now is a slightly more complicated example, something that wouldn't necessarily be extracted out into an extension. Now, now it could be, and in fact, we're going to do exactly that later on in this episode. Okay, so here we've got an inner shadow implementation. This is a simplified implementation of the version found in Pure Swifty Wide Tools. Now, there are also implementations for views, images, and text. So if you want to go and check that out, you might find it interesting. I'll leave a link in the description below. We're going to take that, and we're going to extract it into a view modifier that we can reuse wherever we've got a shape. And let's start by defining our own view modifier. Private struct, inner shadow shape modifier. It's going to be tied to a certain shape. Okay, so we say that the shape itself is that. It's going to have a radius of CG float and an offset of CG point. And then we get to the actual method, which is body, which takes a content return some view, and then you stick in your modifier, which is going to be, in this case, this bit of it. And that overlay is going to be modifying that content. And in order to refer to this from the view, I'm going to initialize this view modifier in an extension, which has pretty much become a standard now. It is quite messy to initialize view modifiers inside a view, I think. So we're going to do that, but we're going to do it on shape for a reason that will become clear in just a second. Private extension shape in a shadow like we did before for the fill. That fill is going to be of type FS. We give it a radius. We give it an offset which we will initialize by default to zero, and that returns some view. So the first thing we need to do is fill this thing with the shape style that we have provided. Self, fill, we pass in the fill. Now we've got something that we can modify. We pass in an instance of an implementation of view modifier to the modifier called modifier. So we say modifier and we pass in an instance of this thing, which is our inner shadow modifier. And we initialize it with our parameters. Now the shape is going to be self because we are in this case, a circle. Okay. So we say self, we pass in the radius and the offset. Very clean, very nice, nothing too difficult. And then here, we've, we've got our shape that has been passed in. And now everywhere that we've got circle, we just replace it with shape. All right, like those three places, shape. We set the blur to five. I mean, well, that is the radius of the shadow. So we say radius. And then the offset is just the offset. All right, lovely. At this point, that is job done. Because I can say, for this circle, get rid of all of that. Just say inner shadow. We give it our gradient for the fill. 
and a radius of five. We resume, and here we can see a shadow without an offset, which is exactly what we have specified. We can put an offset in there. We can really move it over, or just a little bit. Let's say we wanted to make it as an extension. I can do that with extension, right? That's fine. Uh, and then instead of all of that, um, grab the uh, overlay bit. Right, we stick that instead of the modifier. Right, instead of shape, we say self, and here as well. Radius and offset should be the same. And that is equivalent, okay? That is the same thing. We can do that. Absolutely, look, it works. Say that we wanted to have an inner shadow whose offset was based on an angle and a radius instead of actually giving it the specific offset. All right, let's, let's implement that and see what happens. All right, so let's take that. And instead of offset, as a CG point, we say the offset is going to be a CG float, but we're also going to pass in an offset angle, which is going to be an angle. So then we can calculate the offset based on the offset angle. What would we do in this case? Uh, so we would actually say that the offset is going to be a point, we give it the offset and the offset angle. Now I'm leaning heavily on the pure Swift UI framework but what we what this means is that we can use this inner shadow shape modifier in the same way but with different parameters into the extension so because it's extracted out into its own view modifier it just makes things clean right however that does not defeat the argument that says well okay why can't i just say inner shadow in extension right I pass in the fill, give it the same radius, and then just say that the offset is equal to this. That's reuse. That's code reuse, it absolutely is. Look at that. So the implementation is still down here. I'm not repeating myself. Why isn't that a better option? And I can't tell you that it isn't a better option. And this is where personal choice comes in. When it comes to this kind of view modifier, you are absolutely fine to put it all in an extension if you want. If you think that makes it clearer, then put it in an extension. Now, I happen to think it does make it slightly more maintainable when you're talking about this number of parameters and you've got it nice and clean here. You can see exactly what's going on. You know, however, I could also make the counter argument that I need to make sure that I've called fill before I call the modifier in order to make this work. Because that content is a view, right? So I can't call fill on that. Anyway, these are decisions that you have to make. Now, having said all of that, regardless of which method you choose, this is now an encapsulated feature. Okay, you now have this in your library. So, because we're not repeating the shape all over the place, instead of circle, I can just say, I can just say rectangle, okay? And it will give me an inner shadow on a rectangle. And I've had to change nothing except the shape itself. So as you can see, it got a bit hairy at the end there because, you know, I don't think there is a definitive answer to this one. I mean, I've done it both ways. So I, I, I'm on both sides of the fence on this one. You know, maybe you know more than I do. You know, in the comments, let me know. Do you have a reason to use view modifiers over using just an extension when you're not using property wrappers? You know, when you don't have to. I mean, maybe I'm missing something. It's not beyond the realm of possibilities, but I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, so uh, do let me know. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to be looking at stateful modifiers where you do have to use a view modifier. Uh, and we're going to be using it from a behavioral standpoint. We're only going to implement behavior. Uh, so uh, if you know, if you're interested in that, uh, then uh, join me for it because it's going to be brilliant. If you like this content and smash the like button, it really does help people find the channel and consider subscribing for more. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me. See you next time.